Welcome to 15 Minute Discourse, everyone, the show that gets you up to speed quickly. Today, we're diving deep into quantum entanglement. Um, we've got a really fascinating mix of sources here, you know, papers, research articles, and we're going to break down the most interesting stuff for you. Sounds like fun. It really is. So have you ever heard that phrase, spooky action at a distance? Oh, yeah, that's a classic. It is. And it perfectly captures the essence of quantum entanglement. How can two particles be linked in a way that they influence each other instantaneously, even when they're separated by huge distances? It's like they're communicating faster than the speed of light. It sounds impossible, right? But that's the beauty of quantum mechanics. It challenges our everyday intuitions about how the world works. Absolutely. So to really wrap our heads around entanglement, we need to understand a few key concepts from quantum mechanics. So let's start with superposition. You know, the idea that a quantum system, say an electron, could be in multiple states at the same time. Until we try to measure it. Exactly. It's like a coin spinning in the air. It's both heads and tails until it lands and we actually see the result. And then there's the measurement problem. The fact that the act of measuring forces the system to choose a state. It's as if our observation creates reality, at least at that quantum level. Mind-blowing. And then we have wave-particle duality, where quantum things like electrons and photons, they can act like waves or particles. Depends on how you're looking at them. It's like light can spread out like a wave, but also hit a detector like a particle. It's as if they're playing tricks on us. Maybe a little. Yeah. And don't forget the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you know, the idea that we can't know both a particle's position and momentum with perfect accuracy at the same time. The more we know about one, the less we know about the other. Like there's this fundamental limit to our knowledge of the quantum world. Right. And that suggests that at a fundamental level, reality itself is inherently uncertain. It's not just about the limits of our instruments. It's baked into the universe itself. Wow. OK, so we've got this foundation of already super strange quantum stuff. Yeah. So where does entanglement actually fit into all of this? It takes these counterintuitive concepts like superposition and uncertainty and sort of amplifies them. So two particles become linked, correlated. It doesn't even matter how far apart they are. You measure the state of one and instantly you know the state of the other. It's like they're connected by some invisible thread that transcends space and time. And this has actually been experimentally proven, right? Like there was that paper from 2018 where researchers entangled two tiny drums, each about the width of a human hair. Oh, yeah. And they managed to maintain that entanglement for a record-breaking 20 microseconds, which in the quantum world is a really long time. Incredible. But, you know, Einstein and his colleagues, they weren't too keen on this whole entanglement business. They were really bothered by it. Right. They absolutely were. They argued that it implied quantum mechanics wasn't a complete theory. They thought there had to be some hidden variables that were accounting for this seemingly impossible connection. Because it challenged the principle of locality, right? The idea that an object can only be influenced by its immediate surroundings. Yeah, exactly. Einstein and his buddies, they thought there must be some hidden information carried by the particles that predetermines their states. But then we have John Bell who comes along, and his theorem gave us a way to test whether this spooky action at a distance was real or just a quirk of the theory. Right. He essentially said, if the world works according to local realism, meaning things have definite properties even when we aren't looking at them, then certain conditions should always hold true. These are the famous Bell's inequalities. And if entanglement was real, if these particles were really connected in this non-local way, then those inequalities would be broken. Exactly. And in experiment after experiment, physicists have violated Bell's inequalities, confirming that the connection between entangled particles is truly non-local. Quantum mechanics wins again. Yeah, it's really incredible. These Bell tests, they really flipped our understanding of the quantum world on its head. They showed us that the universe is far stranger and more interconnected than we ever thought, right? But Okay, if these connections are real, how do they actually work? Like, what's the mechanism behind this spooky action at a distance? Ah, that's the million-dollar question. And it's one physicists are still trying to figure out. But one of the papers you gave us actually suggests that the answer might lie in something called quantum fields. Quantum fields. Hmm. I remember seeing that term in some of the stuff we read, but can you remind me? Sure. So basically, quantum field theory says the universe, it's not made up of particles, but of these underlying fields. They permeate all of space and time. Okay, so instead of thinking about little tiny billiard balls bouncing around, we should be imagining the universe more like a vast ocean of interconnected fields. Yeah, that's a good way to picture it. And these fields, they can like ripple and fluctuate, 
and we perceive those ripples as particles. So an electron, for example, isn't actually a discrete object, but like a localized excitation of this electron field. Exactly. Okay, I'm starting to see how this connects back to entanglement. If particles are just these excitations of a deeper underlying field, then entanglement could be some kind of correlation or resonance between those fields. That's the general idea, and it could explain how entangled particles influence each other instantly, no matter how far apart they are. If they're ultimately manifestations of the same field, they're not really separate entities, are they? Right, they're just different aspects of this single interconnected whole. So entanglement isn't about particles sending signals to each other faster than light. It's about a deeper level of connection embedded in the very fabric of reality. Wow. One of the study guides actually had this really interesting analogy. Imagine two singers, right? They're harmonizing perfectly, but they're in separate soundproof rooms. Okay, yeah. So they're not communicating directly, but they're still in sync. Like there's some invisible conductor guiding them. Exactly. And in the case of entanglement, that invisible conductor could be this underlying quantum field that links the particles. That's a really cool analogy. Now, another concept that came up a lot in the sources was entanglement entropy. It's a way to measure how much information is shared between entangled systems, right? Exactly. The higher the entanglement entropy, the stronger the correlation, the more intertwined their fates are. So to go back to that singing analogy, the entanglement entropy would be a measure of how well the singers are harmonizing. You got it. That makes so much more sense now. Yeah. And one of the papers actually discussed how entanglement entropy can be used to study black holes. Yeah, there's this growing idea that black holes might be highly entangled with their surroundings. It's fascinating. We usually think of them as these isolated, destructive things, but maybe they're more interconnected with the universe than we realize. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about quantum computing. There was a lot in the materials about how entanglement is at the heart of these futuristic machines. Can you explain how that works? Sure. So quantum computers, they use superposition and entanglement to do calculations in a totally different way than regular computers do. A classical bit can only be a zero or a one, right? Right. But a quantum bit, or qubit, can be in a superposition of both zero and one at the same time. It's like that spinning coin being both heads and tails simultaneously. Yeah. And by entangling qubits, you can create these powerful correlations that allow them to essentially perform computations in parallel. So it's like having a whole team of computers working on a problem at the same time instead of one computer doing it step by step. That's a good way to put it. And that's why quantum computers have the potential to tackle problems that would take classical computers, you know, billions of years to solve. Things like breaking the encryption codes that protect all of our online data. Exactly. Or simulating the behavior of complex molecules, which is incredibly valuable for drug discovery. And that's where quantum supremacy comes in. You know, that point where a quantum computer can outperform any classical computer for a particular task. There was a lot of hype a few years ago when Google claimed they achieved quantum supremacy, right, with their Sycamore processor. Yeah, there was. It was a big deal. And while some people are still debating the specifics of that claim, it's pretty clear that quantum computing is advancing at a really impressive rate. And entanglement is the key driving force behind it all. It's amazing. But I know there are also some challenges and limitations, like decoherence, which was mentioned in one of the papers. Oh, decoherence. It's the biggest enemy of entanglement. It's this process where the delicate correlations between entangled systems get disrupted by interactions with their environment. So going back to those entangled drums, they were only able to stay entangled for that fraction of a second before noise from the environment interfered. Exactly. And the larger and more complex the system you're trying to entangle, the more vulnerable it is to decoherence. It's a big hurdle to overcome, especially when you're trying to build a practical quantum computer. So it's a race against time, basically, to do your computation before that entanglement fades away. Pretty much. But researchers are coming up with some really clever ways to shield entangled systems from environmental noise. Things like using super cold temperatures, vacuum chambers, and error correction codes. Decoherence is a tough opponent, though. It seems like we've only just started to understand this incredible phenomenon. What other areas of entanglement research are scientists really excited about right now? Well, one that's particularly interesting is the idea of macroscopic entanglement. That's entangling objects that you can actually see with the naked eye. So we've been talking about entangling particles, but could we actually entangle bigger things? Like marbles or even, I don't know, living things. That's the dream, right? It's incredibly difficult to do. 
But some researchers think it might be possible, at least in systems like Bose-Einstein condensates, where you have all these ultra-cold atoms behaving like a single quantum entity. So you create this like quantum soup that exhibits entanglement on a much larger scale. Right. And if we could do it, it would have huge implications for our understanding of that boundary between the quantum world and the classical world, the world we experience every day. It's mind-blowing to think that the same principles that govern the behavior of tiny particles might also apply to the objects we can see and touch. It really does challenge our most basic intuitions about reality, and it leads to some pretty deep philosophical questions, too. Well, we've covered so much ground in this segment, but there's still so much more to explore. There is. In our next segment, we're going to dive into those philosophical questions and explore what entanglement might mean for our understanding of the universe. Okay, so we've spent the last two segments really getting into the nitty-gritty of quantum entanglement, you know, the science behind it. But now I kind of want to step back and look at the bigger picture. Like, what does this really tell us about reality itself? Because some of these sources, they go pretty deep into these philosophical implications, and it gets pretty wild. Yeah, entanglement really forces us to confront some of our deepest assumptions about how the universe works. One concept that I kept coming back to was retrocausality. You know, the idea that an effect could actually precede its cause. Uh -huh. It was in one of those research articles. And it suggests that these entangled particles, maybe they can influence each other backwards through time. It's definitely a mind-bending idea, but there are some physicists who think that it might actually be a more elegant way to interpret certain quantum experiments. I mean, if these entangled particles are really interconnected beyond the limits of time, then maybe our whole concept of cause and effect needs to be revisited. It does make your head spin a bit. Does that mean, like, our future actions could potentially influence events that have already happened? It's a deep rabbit hole to go down for sure. And that article even talked about the implications for free will and determinism. Like, if the future can influence the past, does that mean our choices are already predetermined? Or is it more like everything's interconnected, past, present, future, all tangled up together? It's starting to make sense why Einstein called it spooky action. This stuff really challenges everything we think we know about reality. And then there's the idea that entanglement might actually play a role in consciousness. That one really blew my mind. Ah, yes. Quantum mechanics and the mysteries of the mind. One of the study guides actually brought up the hypothesis that entanglement could be involved in how neurons talk to each other in the brain. So, like, entanglement would be the mechanism that allows for that massive network of neurons to create our thoughts, our emotions, our whole experience. Yeah, it's definitely a speculative idea, but it's gaining some traction. Some researchers believe that the brain might actually be using quantum phenomena to achieve that level of complexity and interconnectedness. Which would kind of explain why consciousness is still such a huge mystery to us. If it's rooted in quantum weirdness, no wonder it's so hard to wrap our heads around it. So I guess the big question is, can we actually harness entanglement for practical things, you know, be beyond just quantum computing and communication? That's a question that really gets people excited and a little nervous at the same time, you know? The possibilities are enormous, but we're still in the early stages of understanding how to control and manipulate it. What about quantum teleportation? I know that's been a hot topic for a while. It's not quite like beaming people up like in Star Trek, but it does use entanglement to transfer quantum information. Yeah, and it's been done in the lab with photons, even atoms. But teleporting larger objects or even people, that's still science fiction for now. But still, imagine being able to send information, maybe even matter, across vast distances instantly. That would be revolutionary. For sure. Communication, transportation, medicine, everything would change. But there are big ethical and societal implications, too. Definitely. Who would have access to that kind of technology? How would we regulate it? What would it even mean for like our sense of self if we could just teleport ourselves wherever we wanted? Those are questions we really need to start thinking about now as the field of quantum technology is developing so quickly. We have to make sure that these incredible tools are used responsibly and for the benefit of everyone. It's clear that quantum entanglement, it's not just a scientific curiosity, it's a paradigm shift. Yeah. It's forcing us to rethink our place in the universe and the nature of reality itself. It's an incredible journey of discovery and we're really just at the beginning. As we keep exploring the mysteries of entanglement, who knows what other mind-blowing discoveries we'll make? It's really exciting.
This deep dive has been such a fantastic exploration of quantum entanglement, from the basics to the experiments to the philosophical stuff and beyond. It's amazing how much there is to unpack, and it really seems like we're only scratching the surface. Well, we hope you've enjoyed joining us on this journey into the strange world of quantum entanglement. And if you're hungry for more deep dives into all sorts of fascinating topics, be sure to like and subscribe to 15-Minute Discourse. We'll see you next time. And until then, keep those minds curious.